to get started in just a few minutes. If everyone could find their seats, we'll get started in about one minute. We'll get started in about one minute. While we're waiting, let's give a big round of applause to our Chapin uh, Mariachi Band. This is the kind of talent that we produce here in El Paso ISD. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. You about 30 seconds to find a seat so we can get started. I think I need my clicker. Uh -huh. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. It's a little after 5.30. It's 5.32, and I really want to honor your time as best that I can. So first of all, welcome to Chapin High School, and thank you so much for joining us this evening for what I'm calling Hopes and Dreams 2.0. And once again, I want to give the students who opened us up uh, this evening a round of applause. It takes a lot of time and effort and a lot of leadership and courage to represent your school and welcome the community into your school. As I said, we're in, gonna engage in Hopes and Dreams 2.0. My name is Diana Saavedra. I'm the proud superintendent of El Paso ISD. And tonight, uh, we have come together with the Andrus feeder pattern, the Irvin feeder pattern, and the Chapin feeder pattern to continue the discussion that we started in the spring of last year. Um, if you remember in the spring of last year, uh, you know, I started as the superintendent for this school district on January the 4th. So I'm coming up on my first year anniversary in just a few weeks when we launched the new school year in January. Uh, not new school year, I'm sorry, the new calendar year in January. Um, and so when I came in January, a big part of what I did as a superintendent over my first 100 days was to listen and learn, if you recall. I was visiting campuses, I was engaging in community conversations with community leaders, and I hosted a series of hopes and dreams sessions for each one of the feeder patterns in the spring of last year. I, I did 10 hopes and dreams sessions, and the goal of those hopes and dreams sessions was to get feedback from you as a community about the education and the future of this school district. The education of your children and what you all uh, were thinking was possible for your kids and where we needed to go as a school district to really raise the level of expectation and deliver on that high quality you know, education that you expect as a community. So um, during that time, we met with the 10 feeder patterns and we gathered a lot of information from you about what you were thinking you wanted for the future. That was the first question we asked you. The second question we asked you was, um, if this is the future that we want for this district and if this is the future that we want for our children and their education, what is it gonna take for us to get there? What do we have to do to move in that direction. So that was the conversation that we had in the spring. And if you remember when we launched that conversation, I said it was important to get that feedback from the stakeholders in the community because if I created the plan in isolation with my administration or in isolation with the board, then that's my plan or that's the board's plan. But we need this plan to be our plan. And you know, a lot of people talk about, well, we need buy-in from the community. I don't believe that. I believe we need ownership from everybody that's involved and is responsible for the education of our children. Ownership is very different than buy-in. Ownership means there's a higher level of commitment. Because when we have come together to say, 
this is what we want, and this is how we're going to do it, then we all own a certain part of that responsibility. So that's why we have community leaders here and community advocates. That's why we have parents here. That's why we have teachers and non-instructional support staff here. And most of all, that is why we have students here in the room this evening. Because remember, we talked about the fact that we exist as an organization to serve children. And we must listen to the voice of our children and the voice of our students if we hope to really get to that future that we're after. So that's the continued conversation that we're going to have this evening. The other thing I shared with you is that I want to accomplish two big things in my first year as the superintendent of El Paso. The first is, you know, I have seven board members who work alongside me. They're volunteers. They're elected officials, but they're volunteers. They all have full-time jobs, but even aside from their full-time job, they dedicate a lot of time and effort to governing and leading this district alongside me. And I know that we have some board members here this evening. We have Ms. Isabel Hernandez, who um, represents uh, several of the schools um, that are represented here this evening, Irvin Feeder Pattern and Chapin Feeder Pattern, correct? Yes? And uh, I know that Israel Itabali is not here, but he may be joining us uh, later this evening. He represents the Andrus feeder pattern. So thank you all so much for your service, and thank you so much for being here this evening to listen to what the community has to say. But as I was saying, so my first goal was really to work together with the board to build what we call a team of eight, because I don't work in isolation by myself as the superintendent. I also work collectively with each one of the board members as a collective team of eight for us to move this district forward. So we've done a lot of work together, team building, so that we can build a very functional, cohesive team to lead this district. Because it starts at the top, right? It starts with us at the top, with the superintendent and the board. The second goal was really to ensure that we could create directional documents and a strategic path forward for this school district. And we're getting close. We're not quite there. But tonight is a big part of the push that we need to make to get to the finish line so we can finalize our strategic documents and our path forward. So the last time we were together, you all, we, we had this conversation. And so these are all of the people who were part of the focus groups. We had close to 1,500 stakeholders that were part of conversations in each one of those feeder pattern discussions. And it was a combination of students, teachers, community, uh, and non-instructional support staff and parents. So this is the number of people who were actually present just like you're present here with me this evening. We also had several people that are not included in this count who participated from the gallery. And I encourage you, if you're sitting in the audience this evening in the bleachers in the gallery, to engage uh, in the conversation as well with your phones uh, or whatever technology you have with you. And we're, we're live streaming this just as we did in the spring. And uh, I encourage those of you who are at home watching also to uh, become part of the conversation tonight. Uh, you can access the documents that we'll be working with that our stakeholders have at the tables at uh, elpasoisd.org forward slash hopes and dreams. There are links there that where you can access the documents that we're going to be working with this evening. So, so this is the participation breakdown in terms of the number of people who represented each one of the feeder patterns the last time we were together. We had about 125 participants from Andrews High School. We had about 119 from Chapin, 
and we had over, I mean, about 140, a little over 140 from Irvin High School. You all generated significant number of thoughts and significant numbers of ratings. And if you remember, that's what we're going to do this time. We're going to generate thoughts, you're going to read those thoughts, and you're going to rate those thoughts as it relates to some of the documents in just a minute. So this was the number of participants the last time we came together. And so as we did our thought exchange, then we went back and we mined through the data. What are people telling us? These are some of the key thoughts that came out of the first round of hopes and dreams when we think about these three feeder patterns. The first was safe and harmonious school buildings that have AC and heating that work and students, you know, where students are safe. All right, so the facilities were improvements was uh, something that was an overarching thought, you know, from this particular feeder pattern when we thought about what we want for the future of our, uh, of our district and for our students. The second was, you know, the home uh, school relationship between the parents and teachers and developing a good, strong partnership is critical and important to the educational process. And then a better and healthier learning space for students and teachers with less of a negative environment. That speaks to culture, the culture of our schools. Is it a healthy learning environment? Is it a healthy culture where kids feel safe, where there's not a lot of bullying, and where kids feel a sense of belonging, where there's care, compassion, you know, that's part of the conversation? Some other key thoughts when we think about the second question about, all right, so if this is what we want for the future, what are some of the things that we need to do to get there? Uh, more is being asked of teachers and administrators, so compensation was something that was important and weighing heavy on people's minds when we talked uh, with each other last spring. Well, you all know that during the budget development process last spring, the, budget, the board adopted a budget in June that was you know, the, one of the most aggressive compensation packages in the history of this uh, school district. We passed a 7% raise for teachers and other uh, uh, employees in, in certain job roles, and then we had 5%, 4%, and 3%, depending on you know, what job role you fell into. All right, so compensation is something that we have prioritized. Reestablish a focus on student-centered learning and not always on testing. That was a big one. A movement away from so much assessment and really focused on student agency, student ownership of learning, and a lot of engagement in project-based learning in the classroom. And then a caring and safe environment that meets the needs um, for the adults and for the students, right? And a model, uh, in other words, we, from the top down, modeling the kind of behavior and the kind of culture that we want to create at our campuses. That's why I said it starts at the top with me and the board, right? So those were the overarching thoughts when we mined through the data that you shared with us, you know, last spring. Aside from the major thoughts, here were some common themes that came out from the conversation and the thoughts that you all generated. Support and respect. You know, I think that across the country, Teachers are not feeling valued. There's a lot of surveys that have gone out nationwide uh, surveying teachers and a lot of uh, statewide surveys. And the data that we're getting back shares that teachers are leaving the profession in higher numbers because they don't feel respected and valued. Not necessarily just by their internal stakeholders and leaders, but by the community at large, from the community at large, right? And so more support for teachers, um, appreciation, support from central office and compensation. All of those things were part of that. Security. More than ever before, security is a big thing that we need to be thinking about. Because not only do our children need to be physically safe in terms of us investing in you know, our building infrastructure for safety, but I think our, our, our students need to feel emotionally safe and also, you know, we need to focus on physical wellness as well. So mental wellness, physical wellness, 
and them, you know, just feeling safe all together at school. Academics, uh, we are looking at graduation rates and making sure that students have a path for their future and that they're planning for that and we're encouraging them to maximize their strengths. Learning that excites and inspires, equity and challenging courses that really engage students. Accountability for parents and for all of us. Uh, funds spent wisely, so allocation of resources. Open communication, transparency was a big you know, thing, uh, theme that came out from your conversations last time. And then equity. We talked about the fact that our, the average age of our facilities is 50 years old. So equity in terms of making sure that all of our children have an opportunity to be educated in 21st century learning spaces is something that we need to be considering long term. Um, equal funding for campuses and just a quality education for all students. So big themes, you know, like I said, support and respect, security, academics, accountability, and equity. So I want you to be thinking about these thoughts and these themes that have come out of the feedback that you gave me the last time because when you start mining through some of the documents this evening, I want you to see and tell us whether you see some connections in what you told us and what we produced for you to give us more feedback on tonight, okay? So, I also uh, talked to you a little bit about what I already knew going into the conversations the last time that we met, which was that we have a challenge as a, you know, as a leadership you know, team of eight to restore the faith, the faith of the community in the school district, right? Because there's been a lot of things that have happened over the course of the school district's history and so we, we don't want to make the same mistakes. We want to, you know, honor uh, the community. We want to restore your faith in us. And we want to operate with integrity and transparency. I, as I said, address day, uh, aging facilities. You know, we have decreasing enrollment. So we need to stabilize that enrollment. This year, our enrollment is actually up uh, by 1,200 kids. But we were projecting a shortfall. So when I, so that's, you know, I want you to be, I want to be clear. We haven't stabilized the enrollment, but we have increased our enrollment from what we anticipated and projected this year by 1,200. We're still about five or 600 students short of stabilizing that enrollment. And then again, you all talked to me last time again about overemphasis on testing. So where are we today now with all of the information that we gathered from you? Well, as I said, as I was collecting information from you, I was all, all, also working very closely with the Board of Trustees. And so we engaged in several team building sessions over the course of the spring in February, in March, in April, and in May. And during that time, we created our mission, our vision, and our core beliefs and commitments. And in just a minute, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to read those, because you have them at your table, and I'm gonna ask you to give me some feedback about that. But we, be, we worked together from February to May on, on, on that. We mined through you know, all of the data you gave us, we had conversations as a board, and we nailed down those three parts of our directional documents, which I call phase one. Then we took a break in June because we needed to focus on adopting the budget. July, we don't have a board meeting in July. August was focused on launching this new school year, so we picked up our work again in September. And we've been working September, October, in November, we've had, I believe, four sessions already to finish out phase two of the documents that I'll share with you in just a minute. And this is our board of trustees. So at your tables, you have a document that lists the mission, the vision, and the core beliefs and commitments. I want you to be looking at that. 
that one. Uh, let me see. Uh, it looks like this. It's this document right here. And it's in, in English and in Spanish. On one side it's English, on the back side it's Spanish. So it's the mission, the vision, and the core beliefs and commitments. All right? So our mission is, as the board drafted it, in partnership with our families and community, we will uphold the highest standards to provide inclusive and fair learning experiences that support the whole child. All right? That's our mission that I want you to be looking at to give us feedback. Our vision is to inspire and empower learners to thrive. So our mission really speaks to why do we exist? And our vision really speaks to where do we want to be and what do we want to become? So we want to become an organization that inspires and inspi inspires learners to thrive. So then Here's our core beliefs and commitments. And again, I want you to be thinking about some of the themes that we just talked about and see if some of these core beliefs and commitments really, you know, meet the mark in terms of the feedback that you gave us. All right? The core beliefs and commitments really speak to what are we anchored to as an organization? What do we believe? What are the things that drive the work that we do? What are we about? when we think about our values. And so this is, these are the core beliefs and commitments that I want you to, to look at. And I'm going to give you an activity in just a minute so that you can give us some feedback on these three parts. Ho child, opportunity, excellence, equity, community, and accountability. Whole child, we champion a well-rounded educational experience to ensure all students are healthy, safe, valued, engaged, and academically challenged. That's a value that we have. We value opportunity. We honor and cultivate the unique needs and interests of all learners through relationships and personalization. Excellence. We value excellence. We embrace a culture of creativity, exploration, and innovation to sustain our growth and improvement. We value equity. We commit to removing barriers to ensure our schools and programs are inclusive and equitable. Community, we value community. We build community through authentic engagement, collaboration, and honoring diversity of thought. And lastly, accountability. We value accountability. We foster high expectations, continuous growth, and high achievement. All right, so these are phase one of the documents that the board produced in the spring, after all of the data that we collected. We haven't started going through phase two, but this is phase one. So in looking at the mission, in looking at the vision, and looking at the core beliefs, I'm going to give you a task to do. I need, there we go. This is where we need to be. All right. So at your table, you have a handout that looks like this with a QR code, all right? And I'm going to give you about six minutes to work through these three questions. But I want you to listen carefully before you get started. I want you to spend a little bit of time discussing at your table the mission, the vision, and the core beliefs. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of time to type in, as you think about the mission, vision, and the core beliefs, what squares with your thinking? In other words, you're sure about or you agree with or this squares with your thinking. The second thing I want you to think about when you're thinking about the mission, the vision, and the core beliefs is what would you change? Is there wording that doesn't really sound right? Would you, is there a core value that you think we're missing that we should add? You know, is there something about the mission or the vision that really just doesn't suit your fancy? Okay? And then the last one is, what's still circling in your mind? What questions do you still have? 
and share some I'm still thinking about and finish that statement. So I'm going to give you about six minutes to discuss at your table the mission, vision, and the core beliefs, and then spend some time using the QR code to type in your thoughts. All right? Ready, set, go. If you have uh, problems getting into the QR code, raise your hand and we'll help you. need a device for translation, we can get you one as well. Three more minutes. He's back here. Make sure that you guys don't have any questions. We have about two more minutes. Two more minutes. 
Look at that, y'all are generating some good feedback. This is what I like, good feedback. Lots and lots of thoughts on the mission, the vision, and the core beliefs and commitments. themselves. The mission, the vision, and the core beliefs. Y'all have about a minute and 30 seconds. Sorry. Okay, this is what teachers would call a little bit of a warm-up activity before we take a deeper dive into some of the other parts of the document. All right, you have about a minute left. One minute left to let us know about the mission, the vision, and the core beliefs. And then whoever's working the PowerPoint, if you'd get me back to the... Right, y'all have about 20 seconds. Ten. Five. Four, three, two, and one. All right. So that was your warm up because that part of the document was pretty easy to mine through, right? There's one mission statement which really talks about why we exist. There's one vision statement that has three big words inspire, empower, and thrive. And then there's six core values or beliefs that we you know, include that this is what we're about. So thank you all for warming up and giving us uh, some feedback using the Padlet and the QR code that we gave you. All right, so li like I said, in the spring, this was phase one of the documents that we worked on based on the feedback that you gave us. And as we thought about the data a little bit more and we mined through the data when we reconvened our work again in September, we developed what we're calling our strategic blueprint. And it really speaks to, if we talked about hopes and dreams, then how are we gonna realize those hopes and dreams? So our plan is really called Hopes and Dreams Realized 2025 because it's really a three-year plan, and it's a strategic blueprint that should chart our course for the next three years. And there's three terms that I need you all to, be, uh, to understand before I launch you into the next phase of the documents that I want you to give us feedback on, all right? So there's three terms that are really, really important. One of them is titled strategic levers, the other one is essential action, and the third is key targets. So when you think about strategic levers, what we were thinking was, what are the levers that we have to pull, the big levers that we have to pull to really propel this organization forward? That's what we mean by a strategic lever. The broad thematic work that we have to really focus on to get us where we're going, all right? An essential action then is for each one of these strategic levers, what actions do we need to take that are really uh, tied to that lever? That gives us a little bit more specificity. Focus areas that will yield the most impactful gains for the school district. So we've got these strategic levers and then these actions 
that are really going to help us accomplish that work. And then the last thing is key targets. Well, how are we going to determine whether we're making progress or not with all this stuff? All right? Now, the documents that you have in front of you today do not include the key targets. Because the last question that I'm going to ask you this evening is to give me feedback on what you want to see as a community that would show you that we're making progress on this plan. So, and we'll use that to finalize our key targets and how we're going to report out to the community going forward. But I do want you to engage in conversation in just a minute on the strategic levers and the essential actions. Because again, I want to make sure that as we've collected all of this information, that we've hit the mark in terms of the direction that we're setting for the school district. All right. So... What are our levers? What are our five strategic levers? We have five of them. The first one is associated with whole child development. And our strategic lever statement is El Paso ISD schools foster learning environments for the whole child to thrive. That's the statement that goes with the strategic lever associated with whole child development. Academic excellence, El Paso ISD empowers all learners to excel in current and future pursuits. Destination district, El Paso ISD solidifies its position as El Paso's destination district. We've been in existence for over 140 years, folks. We are the oldest educational institution in this community. We have always been the pioneers of education in El Paso. It has always started with us. So we need to get back to that. And we need to be the choice that all families make in terms of educating their children. A culture of transparency we, the feedback that we've gotten from the board and from others in the first three community meetings is that perhaps we need to consider changing that to a culture of accountability. Where El Paso ISD cultivates a culture of transparency, care, and service. So transparency can be part of the statement, but possibly, possibly a culture of accountability rather than a culture of transparency. That, that's something for you all to think about as you're providing feedback. And the last strategic lever is really equity by design. El Paso ISD champions a targeted approach to universal access and system equity. So what do those things mean when we think about the essential actions that go with those? So at your tables, you have the strategic levers, and each lever has several essential actions underneath. We have a total of 18 essential actions. We have five for whole child, three for academic excellence, five for destination district, three for a culture of, of accountability or transparency, and two for equity by design. All right? And I'm, I'm not going to read all of those to you, but I want you to be looking at those essential actions very closely as they relate to our mission, as they relate to our vision, as they relate to our values, and as they relate to the statement, the strategic lever statements. Is this going to get us where we need to go? All right? And whole child development talks about classroom culture, integrating systems to support kids, managing, you know, helping kids understand how to manage their behavior, and providing them challenging co coursework. You know, we, we need to develop a curriculum when we think about academic excellence, closing the performance gaps, and then college and career readiness. And you can look through the statements for the other three levers. You know, access to high-quality programs is what we want to do for Destination District. We want to increase our market share. That means we want everybody to know the great things that we're doing so that they can, you know, so that we get noticed and people are paying attention, right? So, before I launch you, 
with our first thought exchange, I want us to take a moment to watch a very short video that we launched um, during convocation for all of our staff to see. The community hasn't seen it, and, and I know that teachers and administrators that are in the room, you've seen it already, but it never hurts to see something uh, more than once, right? So I want the very short video before we launch into the thought exchange. Okay, our sound is not working, so we need to start it again. Still not working. You want to start it again? <laughs> One more time. Here we go. El Paso ISD started in 1883 as a one-room schoolhouse with 53 students and has grown to become El Paso's leading educational institution. The first of many started with us. We are El Paso's first school district. We established the first public kindergarten in Texas. El Paso High School is the city's first high school. We were the first to desegregate and provide equal and accessible education in the borderland. The first to offer one-to-one -one technology for students and the first to offer a health magnet school. We are El Paso ISD with nearly 50,000 students and more than 8,500 dedicated employees strong. We are the largest district in the region and one rich in history. Our programs set us apart from the others that came after. We empower our students to thrive. We are pioneers in education and continue to provide excellence in the classroom. El Paso ISD is El Paso's district. It starts with us. All right, I needed to give you a feel good something before you, you know, kind of dug into the, the document. So we're gonna launch into our first thought exchange. And so you have at your table the hand, a handout that looks like this. Let me borrow yours really quick. It's okay. Uh, it's for you to write on. Um, so we have um, a, a document that looks like this that includes the five levers and the essential actions that go with each lever. It's a front and back. And there's English and Spanish. And so at your tables, uh, what I want you to do before you start discussing, individually, I want you to read through it really carefully. And I want you to answer this question for me. What is missing that should be added or and or should anything be deleted? And does this really capture the thinking and the feedback that you all gave us in the spring of last year? So I want you to go into that QR code. Those of you who are in the gallery, those of you who are watching live stream, you can access these documents on the website. Those of you who are at the tables, you have the document at your table. So get into the QR code read the document, and I want you to generate thoughts, read others' thoughts, and rate those thoughts. I'm gonna give you a good seven to eight minutes to go through this first thought exchange. Ready, set, go. Remember, do some individual work before you start discussing, because I'm going to give you time to discuss. But I need you to look through the document, generate thoughts, read those thoughts, and rate the thoughts.
We've got a lot of people in here, a hundred and over a hundred participants, and we've only generated seven thoughts. We got to work a little harder. I'm gonna push you. We need to generate thoughts, read the thoughts, and rate, rate the thoughts. So get your technology out, your phones, your iPad, whatever it is that you're using. Start generating some thoughts. Let me come check on my peeps over here. Way over. We only have 28 thoughts. I know there's a lot of people in here. If every person in, you know, puts in at least one thought, we should generate several thoughts for you to read and rate. Hi there, how are you? Hi. I haven't forgotten about y'all. I just came over here to check. Okay, you all should be out of the Padlet now, and you all should be actually in the thought exchange. So you, we need, um, if we can get some assistance over here at this table. I'm sorry. The phone is frozen. There we go. Um, no, the, that's the Padlet still. Okay. So you need to be at this, which one is it? Uh, not that one. That's the Padlet. It's the one that's, can you put the QR code back up for us, please? There it is. There it is. You're going to T join. There's the new QR code. Remember, guys, you're not in the Padlet anymore. You should have switched over to using this QR code. All right, we got to generate a few more thoughts, and not only generating thoughts, but you're reading them and you're rating them because that ratio should be closer to 12. Right, you have about a minute and a half. I'm going to give you plenty of time to discuss, but I need you thinking right now. Generating thoughts, reading thoughts, and rating thoughts.
All right. <laughs> Can you add another minute to the time? That, that's good. Okay, read the thoughts and read the thoughts. Exactly. Right, y'all have about thirty seconds left. Read the thoughts and rate them. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Now I'm going to give you some time to discuss at your table. What are some of the, the thoughts that bubbled up to the top in terms of the things that you all were thinking about the levers, the strategic levers, and the uh, essential actions? All right. What might we add what might we take away was there something that was missing that we should have included uh, some of the things that you all came up with um, were um, I think scroll up just a second there was one um, we should add adequate facilities as part of a healthy environment for students um, keep going keep going uh, destination District, Action 5, not all schools are 21st century. So you all gave some really good feedback. So I'm going to give you about two minutes at your table to discuss some of the thoughts that you all generated about the document and what might be missing or what, what might we need to add. And then I'm going to call on some of you to share some of the thoughts from your table. All right, so two minutes to discuss at your table. So at your table, um, discuss some of the thoughts that were generated by the people at your table. You have about 30 seconds. Remember, our discussions and our feedback are focused on the documents that you're giving feedback on. Ten seconds. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Students, I need all the students that are here this evening to stand up. 
All students, I need you to stand up, please. All right, let's give our students a round of applause. Uh, stay standing. I always uh, start with our students because, as I said, the most important voices for us to listen to are student voices. So I'd really like, I know that we have a lot of students here, and thank you all so much for taking the time and for engaging in this level of leadership to provide us some good feedback about whether our dire the direction that we're charting is on target or not. So what I want to hear from you is, as you look through the documents, uh, what can you tell us about what you might add or what might be missing you know, that we need to think about as we're continuing to refine the information? All right, so I want to hear from three students. I want to hear from a high school student. I want to hear from a middle school student. And I want to hear from an elementary student. And I've got microphones, so who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? Who's going to be my courageous student? Right over here, this young lady. Our high school student, please give us your name and your grade level. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Americas. I'm a junior at Chapin. Oh, and I'm a Tumbo Erickson. I'm a sophomore here at Chapin. So as we're looking through the documents and reading the comments on the board, we agree that we need a lot more security. Um, we agree that the, the world has become more spontaneous, and we just need to be able to keep up with it, whether that's either um, including more admin in our schools or equipping students with the knowledge of what to do. OK. And adding more on how adding more admin would um, ensure more security is if you just have from three to four admins covering, you know, let's say Chapin, um, it's such a big school, so not three to four admin can just cover the whole school, you know. Um, at some schools, you'll see, you know, people from other schools come into that school, so you'll see different people that don't even come there anymore, so it just, it kind of leads to saying, like, if you can let other kids from different schools in, who else can you let in? Okay. All right, well, so let's give them a round of applause because as they were sharing information with us, they need to see more essential actions and our clear statements associated with security and really hardening our buildings. And let me give you an example of something that I saw because, I mean, as we're thinking about all of these things, we also have to live with, within our means, right? Because we have a certain budget that we have to operate with. So, uh, and I saw a lot of students sit down. I want all of our students to stay standing. But one of the things that I wanted to share with you is that I was uh, visiting Coronado High School for uh, some events. And while I was there during the day, I encountered a parent volunteer. And that parent volunteer has secured over 40 additional parent volunteers that are scheduled throughout the week, during the day, to assist the campus with patrol outside of the school. So there are things that we can invest in, in terms of things that we do with extra staff. But when we think about all of us bearing a responsibility, there are ways that we can leverage our community to really help us you know, cover all of the, the security measures that we need to do. So thank you very much for those comments. All right, my middle school kids. Who are my middle school kids? Right over here, I have another young lady who's willing to volunteer. So hi, my name is, Cam my name is Camila Lascano. I am in the sixth grade, and I go to Bobby Joe Hill pre-K through eighth. I would like to talk today about security once again, because at my school, if we're ever at least two to three minutes late after the belt, we'll be locked out. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're out in a portable, we're walking through, the bell rings, and we're walking towards the door, we see no one and we're locked out. Let's, since what happened in Uvalde was, of course, really sad, um, with what's been happening with security, also like kind of-ish, because students, of course, they um, end up getting locked out, They they're late to class. Sometimes I was once very late to class because I was waiting almost half an hour outside uh, because no one came around to come and open me. And mm -hmm. as students, we don't get keys or key cards to come in. Mm -hmm. And it is also 
very difficult because what if, so let's just hope this never happens. Somebody comes in armed and they see this student and they're like, oh my, that's an easy target and that's how something very, very tragic happens. Okay, well thank you so much for sharing that. Again, we have our middle school student from Bobby Joe Hill. And so obviously what we hear from our students is security is weighing heavy on their minds. So we need to make sure that we, you know, something that I communicate to the staff on a regular basis is for us to be consistent with our actions. And there may be some additional equipment that we need to have so that we can work through some of the kinks of, yes, we need to, you know, keep our doors locked because it's important for us, for our children to be secure in their classroom. But how do we mitigate the issue of making sure that they're not locked out when they need to be in the classroom learning? So thank you very much. Those are things that we still need, you know, challenges that we still need to overcome. All right, elementary. Who's my elementary students? Ms. All right, well, okay, I'm going to get a different school this time. Right over here, sweetie. Miss uh, Well, Hold on for the microphone right here. What grade are you in and what school do you represent? I'm in fifth grade. My name's Hannah, and I represent Logan Elementary School. All right, yeah, let's give Anna a round of applause. What can you share about the documents that you'd like to see, Anna, that, are, that you didn't see? Um, GT, I think it needs to have its own program because fed ed kids do. Okay, so wonderful. So I do believe that uh, you'd like to see in the essential actions something specific to special programs. The other, you know, so when we think about who we are as a school district, you know, the other thing that I've noticed that maybe could be part of our core beliefs and commitments or maybe an additional essential action that kind of lists gifted and talented special education and then our commitment to biliteracy and biculturalism with dual language, right? So thank you so much for that. Let's give her a round of applause. Wonderful suggestion. All right, I'm going to have my, my students sit down and we're going to go through our second round of, we're going to go through our second round of, um, of thought exchange. Because remember I shared with you, not only do I want you to give me feedback on the document, which you just did, and I'm going to have parents, teachers, and community stand up in just a minute. I want to hear from you if, once we finalize this document, and we incorporate some of the things that we've heard in our Hopes and Dreams 2.0, and, and the board adopts the document in November or in December, depending on how long it takes us to incorporate the feedback, what do you want to see as a community to show that if this is the plan that we adopt, that we're making progress on this plan? All right, so I'm going to give you the next seven minutes, seven or eight minutes, to generate thoughts, read those thoughts, and rate the thoughts about what you'd like to see that would show you that we're making progress on the plan as a community. And how would you like us to report it out? Okay? So, ready, set, go. Start thinking about what you'd like to see in terms of progress, to show progress on the plan. This is your new QR code, new QR code. Okay, is everybody in the QR code? Because we're going to switch the screen. There we go. Can you set it for eight minutes? Yeah. Well, seven minutes now. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
There's also a pamphlet on your table that shows some information about the school district that you might want to look at to get some ideas as well. And I invite members of the gallery and members um, that are watching live stream from home to access the documents and or to give us feedback on how you would like us to show progress on the plan. So what evidence would we collect that would show you that we're making progress on the plan? and maybe some ideas on how we might report that out to the community and how often. Much better. We're generating a lot of thoughts. People are reading the, the thoughts and rating the thoughts. Our ratio is much higher. Okay, you have about two and a half minutes left. Okay, you have about two minutes. about one more minute.
Right, you have uh, about 30 seconds. About 20 seconds left. Ten. And then five, four, three, two, and one. All right, I'm going to give you about two minutes at your tables to discuss what are some of the things that you all generated from your table's perspective about things that we would need to uh, show the community uh, so that you, the community would realize that we're making progress on the plan. So have a, a short discussion at your table, and then I'm going to ask parents and community members to stand up and share. Discuss at your table, about two minutes. What evidence would we collect to show the community that we're making progress on the plan? All right, we have about 30 seconds to discuss at your tables. 30 more seconds. All right, 10 seconds. In five, four, three, two, one. All right. So we've generated a lot of really good thoughts. I've given you a little bit of time to discuss at your table. I'm going to have some people share out. I'm going to start with community and parents, and then we'll uh, round out with our teachers. But I want our communities and parents, uh, if you represent the community or if you're a parent in the room, please stand up and be recognized. Stand up, stand up. All right. I want to give you a round of applause because, as I said, we're all in this together, and we've got to leverage our community assets, and we have to develop good, strong partnerships between the home and the school if we hope to deliver that high-quality education that we want for our kids. So some of the, the, the thoughts that were generated were, you know, key performance indicators that we might, you know, share with the public on a regular basis. Some people talked about, you know, having that forward facing on the website. But I'd like to hear from you all, two community members and two parents. Share with us your thoughts and some of the discussion at the table in terms of what evidence would show that we're making progress on the plan. Who wants to go first? Right over here. 
And can you share with us a parent or community member and from what area? I'm a parent at Torres Elementary and the evidence I would be looking for is for each and every elementary school to have all of the fine arts, not just one of them. Okay. So not just art, but art and music and dance and theater. That would be worth bringing people into. But the other thing that we need to talk about in terms of evidence of improvement would be longer research. I know, Risa, uh, recess. Recess. Longer recess. And lunch. Because research. when p kids have more time with friends and other kids, it builds it builds less st stress. Yeah. And absolutely. every time keep, let it, her keep it going. Raises, <laughs> it raises and raises and raises and it actually starts affecting their grades. Mm -hmm. Like in the star. Some kids can't pass because they have too much stress. Mm -hmm. Friends are essential to mm, well, lowering stress. Yes, let's give her a round of applause. All right. I think I might need to contract you to help me facilitate the next time, all right? No, great, but she makes some great points. You know, the fact that if we're thinking about school culture, how would we measure school culture? And what are some of the things that we could do to really measure that kids are feeling, you know, that they have enough time to interact socially, that they have enough time to eat, you know, that we're building those structures. And how would we develop some sort of measurement or survey for students to give us feedback on whether the things that we've put in place have worked? So thank you so much for that and also the fine arts piece because I know that that also came out uh, of the thoughts from the first uh, thought exchange. All right, I need another community member and, and uh, another or two more community members and one more parent. Yes, right over here. I need to speak some Spanish because I'm, I'm more fluent in Spanish. That's okay. okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. Necesitamos un poco más de equidad en todas las escuelas. Yo he estado en escuelas donde hay tecnología mucho más avanzada en los salones que en la escuela donde estamos nosotros. Necesitamos que todos tengan la misma oportunidad porque todos somos parte del IPISD, pero no todos tenemos la misma oportunidad de ver en nuestros salones la tecnología o las armas para que nuestros niños aprendan. Uh -huh. Eso es un punto. Otro punto es que necesitamos un poco más de seguridad. Yo creo que todo el mundo estamos hablando de esto y lo estamos diciendo. Necesitamos más seguridad en las escuelas. En nuestra escuela hay un policía una vez a la semana. Uh -huh. Y hemos tenido muchos problemas. Es una, es una elementary school donde hubo un niño que llevó un arma. Bueno, no es cierto, no la llevó. Amenazó a los niños con llevar un arma. Son niños de 9, 10 años. Y yo entiendo, nosotros como padres tenemos que enseñarlos, educarlos, darles principios y valores que la escuela no está obligada a hacerlo, porque eso es nuestro trabajo. Pero la escuela debe de proporcionar la seguridad. Y yo entiendo que no hay bastantes policías para cubrir todo el distrito, pero sería buenísimo por lo menos un policía en cada escuela. Gracias, gracias. Let's give her a round of applause. So, she shared with us, you know, also several security concerns in terms of, you know, making sure that our students feel safe. She talked about police presence at each one of our campuses, especially at the elementary campuses. The other thing that she talked about is making sure that we have a way to show the community how we're progressing with modernizing our facilities so that we have technology that's available to students and the infrastructure at each one of the schools that's comparable from one school to the next. So, you know, we've got a pamphlet on the table, and so something that was generated from one of the other communities is that perhaps we would put a dashboard on the, on the website uh, that would include all of the locations of our school where you could hover on a school and we could show you know, uh, maybe some key performance in indicators or some progress that we're modernizing across the school district, not just in pockets of the school district. So thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate that feedback. I want to hear from two more people, and I'd really like to hear about ways that we can report out to the community. 
All right? I understand that you want to share things that you'd like to see. And I, I, that was our first round of thought exchange. I'm really looking for comments associated with how we can show you that we're making progress. So I think I've heard from two parents. I need two community members. Yes. Who's a community member? One back here. Uh-huh. I am. Hi, I'm a community member. I'm Tony Tomaszewski. I'm the CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of El Paso. I think the best way for the community to hear what's really happening in the district is use your students as the cheerleaders, as the advocates to say, I go to this school. These are all the great things that are happening. These are the things that I like about school. These are the things that I don't. Um, really, that's what we want to hear. We want to hear from the students. They're the ones that know better than anybody else. And even mm -hmm. you said that, the children come first. So that's the best way to do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So really reporting out to the, to the community the sentiments of the students. If these things are working, then our students should be happy, our teachers should be happy, and we should have ways that show the community that these are things and possibly increase our market share by you know um, advertising and sharing things on social media that really um, share the great things that kids are experiencing in our schools. All right, one more community member, if I could. Who else is willing to share? One more community member right over here. Well, honestly, I'm a parent, and I'm also an employee. <laughs> but <laughs> my big point is that they're saying about the kids to encourage, but if the kids are being encouraged coming to your house, but the parents are not being involved, then how are we getting this? We're, there's letters being sent out to parents. Are parents really reading them? Because we're saying, yes, teachers, yes, schools. But this is great that parents are able to be included, but we need more where parents are, have responsibilities to be there, to see what really is going on. Don't just judge from outside. Really be there at the school, find out what's happening inside the school to be able to ask for more. That's Thank you I so much push. for that comment. And so what I would share is that we have some pieces in our plan that really talk about how do we strengthen not only partnerships with parents, but also partnerships with the community, right? And so possibly reporting out on how many partnerships we've cultivated, you know, what those partnerships are like. And the, the other thing that I think is important in terms of her comment is that um, attendance is the number one predictor of student success. And so making sure that we report out in terms of our student attendance, so because if we've got high percentages of attendance, that should show that kids want to come to school, that they want to be engaged in their schools, and that parents are you know, really doing their part to share. So I think it's a partnership. It doesn't fall on one uh, group more than the other. It really is being able to cultivate that partnership. So thank you all, parents and community, for sharing with us. All right, teachers. Teachers and non-instructional staff. Teachers and non-instructional staff, if you would stand and be recognized. Teachers and non-instructional staff. And when I say non-instructional staff, I mean, you know, those of, uh, those of you who are maybe not directly in the classroom, but you support what the teachers do in the classroom. So I want to hear from a couple of teachers this evening. It's 6.56, so we just have a few minutes. So I want to hear from two teachers. And I really want to hear what, what evidence should we be collecting that really shows that we're making progress uh, on this plan. So I want to hear from somebody on this side and somebody on this side. So who's going to be my volunteer over here? Right over here. All right. Let's give her a round of applause. So uh, my name is Sarah. I'm at Andrews High School. Um, at our table, we talked about a positive campus culture. Mm -hmm. And that involves students, mm -hmm. parents, campus patrol custodians, cafeteria staff, everybody on campus. Of course, there will be people who always find the negative in anything. Mm -hmm. um, their opinions matter, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, but when the majority of the campus enjoys coming to work, um, sees the good that 
even despite the bad that's happening, they see the good in everything at their campus, then something's working well. Mm -hmm. And I think that matters more than anything else. Right, well thank you. Let's give her a round of applause. I would share that culture, you know, I think you all have heard me say this before, culture trumps st strategy any day of the week. And when we operate as a family and we're cohesive and we're all in this together and we lock arms, then we can overcome any challenge that comes our way. Um, you know, we, we've shown that and proven that as we kind of plowed through the pandemic and we really developed a high level of resiliency. So I think that's absolutely important and it's important for us to develop measures where we can report out that we do have a pervasive, positive school culture uh, that really emphasizes care and compassion and the fact that we're working together as a family. How about on this side? Round us out, one last teacher and share with us, how can we show evidence of the plan? Right over here. Um, after looking at academic excellence and looking to see how we can accelerate learning, differentiate achievement, personalize instruction, as a parent, as a teacher, I'm looking to see what programs do we have in place. Do we uh -huh. have Mayon, Achieve 3000, iStation? The answer would be no. So how uh -huh. can we implement those programs back or uh -huh. get programs that are like those to show that measurement that you're looking for? All right. So increase, maybe we need to look at instructional resources that truly align with the curriculum and align with what we want to see in the classroom in terms of high quality instructional delivery. Let's give her a round of applause and thank you, <laughs> teachers and non-instructional staff. Have a seat. I want to thank you all so much. Um, you know, there were some other thoughts that other um, uh, community members and uh, from some of the hopes and dreams that we had in some of the other feeder patterns, they talked about having a dashboard that might have, you know, green, yellow, and red. So whatever it is that we determine that we need to be measuring and reporting out to the community, that we might report out quarterly. We keep that dashboard up to date and we kind of signal with red where we know, ah, we probably, you know, what we have in the plan doesn't really show that it's being effective. We might have to shift gears, we might have to adjust. You know, yellow meaning mm, we're making some progress with some small tweaks. We might, you know, uh, get better results. And then green meaning, you know what, we really hit the target, we're doing well and uh, we're showing a lot of progress in these particular areas. Something that's simple and consumable by the public so that they understand you know, what kind of progress that we're making. So I wanna thank you all so much for your time this evening. I appreciate the fact that you've been willing to go through and give us feedback on the work that we've done thus far. Uh, we're gonna take all the feedback that we've collected in the four feeder pattern discussions that we've had We've, we've um, hit every single one of the feeder patterns. We just did it in four sessions instead of 10 the, uh, last time. We're gonna go through the information. The board and I will work to continue to refine the document. And then the documents will go to the board for final adoption, either in November or in December. So again, I wanna thank you so much for your time this evening, for your feedback. It's our plan. Uh, we're in this together, and I really appreciate your willingness to be here tonight and be part of the continued conversation. I want to thank the communications team and all of the team that kind of managed the technology here this evening. I want to thank, you know, all of the principals for making sure that you got your stakeholders here. And I especially want to thank uh, Chapin High School for hope hosting us this evening. Thank you all so much. I look forward to continued conversations with you. And like I said the last time, if we want to shape the future, then we all have to be part of creating it. So thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your Monday evening. Mm -hmm.